Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, shame on uh, Peace Stew. Yeah, I'll blame him and his bald head. <laughs> Webs, it is that time of year again, which is pretty much all year long almost at this point, where I get to talk about brand new Star Trek because I am so freaking excited because I got access to the first six episodes of Star Trek Picard season three, and I am now very much able to talk spoiler free about those six episodes, and I am Oh, y'all, I am so, so, so freaking excited. My Trekkie heart is like a fluttering to get to talk about all of this. Um, so get hype. But just before we get into everything, as I said before, uh, I am going to stay spoiler free. So I've seen the first six episodes of the first half and change of the season so far, but I am not going to mention any specifics outside of stuff that has already been revealed in the trailers. So if it is something that has been mentioned or shown or seen within the trailers that have been released for the season so far, I am going to be talking about it, but any of the plot developments or surprises or twists and turns in the narrative beyond what we've already seen in those trailers, I will not make any specific mention of. That being said, I am going to talk generally about the feel and some of the things that I think about uh, season three of the show so far for the first half of it. So if you want no spoilers, no even inklings of what might be happening in the upcoming season, this is your uh, like warning to get out now. Uh, I'm not, again, not going to ruin any of the surprises for you, so don't worry about that. But if you want nothing, this is where you get off right here because we're going to go full talking about it. All right. That having been said, let us talk about season three of Star Trek Picard. And actually, uh, before I get to that, let me talk briefly about Star Trek Picard season one and two because I think it is necessary to talk about those seasons in context of season three because I think my feelings, which I think probably mirror a lot of your feelings out there, I, at least I know generally the fandom feels this way, uh, going into season three after those first two seasons. I have generally not loved Star Trek Picard. Well, I think season one had some good ideas here and there. I like some of the thoughts and the way the world building was set up in that season. I feel like ultimately that season really wasted a lot of its potential to become the big blockbuster Star Trek show. And then season two, I think, compounded it even worse, where I feel like that season, again, had cool ideas and concepts and thoughts, but really just spun its wheels and went absolutely nowhere and did the most superfluous and easy route with a lot of its storytelling. That's my feeling on it, and you can certainly disagree, and I have many friends who I think disagree or even hate it more than I do, whose opinions I respect, but I very much have been down on Star Trek Picard as a series as a whole. It's definitely my least favorite of the sort of mainline Star Trek uh, series that I've been releasing in the past few years. Uh, that was the sort of trepidation that I had going into season three of the show, especially when they added into the mix that a lot of the marketing of the season so far has very much been like, oh, we're bringing back all the TNG crew. We're going to have a continuation of the next generation and sort of that era of Star Trek storytelling and then adding in a lot of fan service nostalgia on top of that by bringing in the TNG cast. That was very, very, very much my worry. And I want to tell you all right now, having watched these six episodes, those worries were, I don't want to say misplaced, but very much set aside almost instantaneously. I could very much tell that this season was very much going for a very different thing than seasons one and two of Picard. The best way that I can describe the feeling of this season is that it is trying to mix the next generation style of feel with the original series movies, like the Undiscovered Countries, Wrath of Khan, Voyage Home, like those original movies, the sort of like weight and filmic and grand approach to storytelling, the nautical feel that those seasons had is very much the vibe of storytelling that this season of Picard is doing, but mixing it in with next generation characters and that era of Star Trek storytelling, as well as the more modern sensibilities that we've come to know from things like Picard and Discovery and things like that. There's very much that sort of modern, like, feel and movement and kineticism to it, but it does have much more weight in that nautical submarine space feel that you get from the original series movies. And it's it's a very unique vibe that is hard to describe based on what you think you know about modern Star Trek style storytelling, um, but it, it very much is just really capturing a, a very unique tone that is so distinct from Picard's seasons one and two that I was honestly really shocked to the point that the opening credits, and I won't spoil them for you, are very much evoking like classic Trek 
abstract style storytelling. And I think it is very much a statement on the show being like, no, nah, this is not what Star Trek Picard season one and two are doing. We're very much doing our own thing. Uh, and I think that very much comes down to Terry Metalis, who is the showrunner for this season and was working on season two of Picard, uh, but I believe he was just one of many showrunners. And like this season very much feels like his baby. And Terry Metalis having been the writer of the show 12 Monkeys, if you watch that series, uh, as well as he was actually worked on Star Trek Enterprise way back in the day. So very much like someone who comes from knowing that history of Star Trek, but able to bring it into a modern sensibility. Uh, there are a few moments, especially about like middle way through the season where the show, even amidst all this action and nonsense, takes moments to pause and be like, yeah, we're out in space. We're getting to do wondrous things. And it really captures that sense of like just joy and exploration that Star Trek has always had. And you were starting to see captured uh, very much in like Discovery and Strange New Worlds and Prodigy and Lower Decks, but it been missing from Picard in its blockbuster action. But it, this show, while it does have that blockbuster action in this season, does take those moments to like stop and be like, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this cool? And that feels very Trek. But even beyond that, this season has very much been marketed as like bringing back the next generation crew. And I am I am actually very surprised by how judiciously and well and, and, and restrained the use of those characters are. My big worry for this season was like right in episode 102, it was going to be Picard getting the band back together. It's like, all right, let's go get the next generation crew. We'll make this TNG season eight. But no. The characters that come in from Next Generation all feel natural, and the show is not just having like, here's Jordy, here's Beverly, it, like these characters just showing up because it feels like they need to show up to get the fan service moment, and now they're part of the narrative. It's like, no, there's actually a restraint on the show for when these characters come in and making it feel earned when those character moments come up. Uh, so when you get to see characters like Worf or um, Jordy or you know all of those characters, uh, Lore, who has been in the trailers, it feels earned and relevant not just fan servicey, which I was my biggest worry, and it's my biggest shock that that is the case. And without saying too much, there are other elements from the next generation uh, that come into the season. And when they do, I'm initially like, oh my God, this is amazing, this is cool. And then I pull back and I'm like, oh, is this a fan service moment? But even those moments that I thought were going to fall into just fan service and just be like, ah, look, we referenced the thing. Aren't you happy we have the thing? It's like, no, those moments, characters, beats are brought in and they are relevant to the story being told. And that is such a fine line to walk. And yet what I love most for is even though they are feeling pertinent to this plot, they also allow the characters to resolve some storylines from way back, going all the way back to the original Next Generation run of episodes that I'm like, oh, I wanted this conclusion. I needed this conclusion as a fan and thought I was never going to get it for many of these characters. And you just are like, oh, Oh, I needed that, and yet it still feels like it was relevant to what's going on. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but in, in, in episode five, there's a particular moment of that where I'm like, this was a perfection, absolute perfection. So I'm loving the restraint and yet judicious use of things. Speaking on that note, there have already been talks and interviews and things that this season is not only a continuation of the next generation as a sort of, uh, you know, storytelling, but the era of next generation. So including Deep Space Nine and Voyager. And oh boy, is that very much the case. Again, no spoilers, but clearly there are a lot of nods to Voyager given we have Seven of Nine in the plot here and she's been in several seasons of Picard so far already, but there are other nods to Voyager too. Uh, but if you are a Deep Space Nine fan, prepare yourself. And that is all I will say, but this season is very much not going to leave Deep Space Nine fans disappointed. And I say this as someone who Deep Space Nine is probably my favorite of that era of Trek and probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite Star Trek show. Uh, just know that I was giddy. There is a moment in one of the few early episodes where I'm like, oh, oh, and I was, you have no idea. You have no idea how exciting it was. Um, and I will leave it there because I will, I will say too much if I go any further than that. But be, that being said, one thing I am saddened by with uh, season three of Picard is there's a lot of the characters that I did like from seasons one and two of Picard that sort of get left the way so like Rios is gone. Uh, we don't see any more of Issa Briones' character, at least in what I've seen so far. Elnor doesn't come back too. And again, that was noted before the season came out, so I'm not spoiling anything to say that. Um, 
That being said, we do get Raffi back here, and what I do like about this uh, rendition of Raffi in this season, without spoiling too much, is they are very much building upon her character traits that we saw in Season 1 of Picard. Um, there were things that we learned in Season 1 of Picard, things to do with her family and her backstory and the struggles that she had as a character that uh, basically got completely ignored in Season 2. They weren't completely gone, there were moments here and there, but they really didn't feel like they were at all relevant. And I was worried that because this season was going to very much be focusing on the next-gen crew, Raffi as a character character would very much just get forgotten but no there are actual like moments that really give her time to shine and show how much she's grown and changed but also had to deal with since we met her in season one and considering she was probably one of the best uh additions to the cast of that season michelle her being amazing and i that's saying something because rios and everyone else even though i have issues with those scenes i like those characters she nails it and she does a really really great job here uh so that is absolutely wonderful that also being said the new characters in the season that this season brings in are fantastic in really interesting and conflicting ways. There is a character that we meet in the first episode of the season called Shaw, who has been revealed in the uh, trailers for the season. He's the captain of the Titan, and he is a really particularly uh, fascinating character. He's a character who I very much went on a journey with over the first six episodes, and he is a lot of fun. You know, he's a character that you start off having one feeling about, and you're like, interesting. I, I'm, I'm unsure about you. But over the next few episodes, he just becomes one of the most nuanced and interesting characters that I think uh, this show has done so far. Which, uh, to take me on, to introduce, amongst all the crap going on, introduce a new character who you take me on an arc with and really make me feel for is fantastic. And the actor does a great job and he becomes almost like surprisingly one of my favorite characters of the season, despite the fact that all my favorite characters from Star Trek are in here. So that is wonderful too. Speaking of new characters, though, we also have our villain, Vatic, played by Amanda Plummer. Uh, and Vatic is really interesting to me. Amanda Plummer, first and foremost, plays her superbly. She is clearly having a ton of fun. So if you like the over-the-top scenery chewing, just having a lot of fun in their roles, uh, villains in Star Trek like Q or uh, even Gul Dukat even, uh, you will really love Vatic. She is a ton of fun. The only negative I will say, at least in the episodes that I've seen so far, she is very much isolated from the rest of the goings on uh, with our characters. Uh, she's very much getting to like have fun on her own doing villainous stuff um, and is not as integrated as I would like. Now maybe that'll change in the latter half of the season, but from what I've seen so far, uh, she is very much a sort of like off doing her own thing um, when I would have liked her to be a little bit more integrated. So that's one sort of critique of the season that I've seen so far. All of your favorite Next Generation crew members and other characters that show up in this season, plus the new characters as well, all get real great moments to shine and grow and develop. These are not the characters that you met uh, at the end of Star Trek Nemesis. They haven't been stuck in amber for years. They have grown and changed. And you see that again right from the first season, first scene of the season. Uh, it's like characters you meet and like they are very different than the characters that we know, but you get to see where they got to this point and how they've grown to get to this point. And I think that that is really, really wonderful uh, to get to, to get to see in a show like this. It doesn't feel like it's just fan service and they've been doing their same thing for, for years and years and years. That also being said, they all have deep, thoughtful character scenes. This season is not all action, action, action. While it is a sort of a big blockbuster, cool story plot going on here, um, there are moments where we get to sit with our characters, be with our characters, and have them uh, feel and, and, and grow. Um, which is something that I feel like Discovery, especially in Picard, especially other Star Trek shows have been better about it. But Discovery and Picard, especially, I feel like have just been like nonstop moving. We never get moments to sit with our characters. This season fixes that. There are some really moving uh, and gut wrenching scenes that we get to have between all of our characters here, um, and it, they get really sold by the fantastic acting uh, throughout the season. Every actor, but especially our TNG actors, are bringing their A game and are really just moving. There are some scenes where they, uh, that are just based solely on the power of the performances of actors like Patrick Stewart or Gates McFadden, and they do it so well. Like, they, there's moments where the show knows to just be like, you know what, we're gonna pull back on the dialogue and things and just let the actor shine, and they deliver. And it is really, really great. Um, they even managed to sell moments that I would have thought in other lesser shows, or at least lesser written uh, seasons of shows, um, would have felt like they jumped the shark. Like, there are a few plot developments in this season where I'm like, is this really where we're gonna go? This is what you're gonna choose to do? And uh, admittedly, they feel like very jump the shark types of things if you looked at the plot beats on paper. And if they didn't sell them, I would have been like, this is dumb. 
but they sell them and it makes it work. Um, there's one plot point in particular surrounding Picard that I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. This feels dumb, but the way that they sell this this beat with his character and the surprise reveal um, is it's very, very, very well, well handled. Um, and so I, I'm impressed with that. One other thing too that I want to mention as well is something that I was nervous about is in the trailers, uh, people were talking about Annika Hansen, uh, Seven of Nine being using the name Annika Hansen in the season um, and people equating that to dead naming of trans people and things like that. Um, and I very much was like, oh, please don't do that to Seven. Seven is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Trek, probably second only to Jed Sia. And I, I really loved that she came into her own, in her own identity, even in Star Trek Picard season two. And so to see that was kind of worrisome to me that the character, that the writers would not get seven of nine and what i will say is be patient because the stuff that they do with seven this season not only set aside my worries with that storyline that actually does it well and i think uh as someone who can see myself in metaphor in a lot of different characters and believe me i want to see lgbtq representation but i also see myself metaphorically in some of the metaphors that the story uses um there's moments in this season that really sung for me, especially in the Seven of Nines character. Um, and I really loved that. Um, so I, I was very, very pleased. And I'll talk more about that when we get to actual reviews of each episode. Um, but I was, I was very pleased with all of that. So all that being said, I think this season of Star Trek Picard is really, really fantastic. It is a lot of fun. It's got some cool stuff, cool surprises, and I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, I do have some like nits to pick and issues here and there uh, that I'll talk about in overall episode reviews. Um, there's certainly, you know, things here and there uh, that I would like more, but uh, of, uh, on the whole, like I am loving and, and just am so excited with this batch of episodes I've seen. And honestly, I'm sitting here kind of very excited to go watch the last four. I, I don't have them yet. They haven't sent them to me and I kind of want them really badly. Um, so it's going to be just me sitting here itching to get those last uh, last four um, along with you. So you should all be very excited. I am very excited about this season um, and I look forward to all of your thoughts as we go into the season moving forward. Um, that all being said, I will say I was uh, very lucky and honored to be invited to the premiere event uh, of Star Trek Picard uh, down in Los Angeles. So I'm so pumped. That's like a dream come true for me. You have no idea how much of a tracky geek I'm just geeking out when I heard that I got invited. So um, I am recording this video right now the week before then, um, but I can't release it according to embargo stuff until the day after the premiere. So probably look out within the next day or so a video of me having attended the premiere. If I have the time, I will try and shoot some stuff and, and show you me nerding out uh, at the Star Trek Picard premiere. Uh, so look for that video in the near future. Uh, and otherwise, look for reviews of the full episodes coming in just a few weeks and get hype get hype friends it is my trekkie heart is singing uh, and i'll leave it there so until next time my friends live long and prosper